You're watching the Bethel College Football Show. I say, brother, you stay home! Brother, 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 brother! Dan Page alongside head football coach of the Threshers, A.B. Stokes, Bethel College, now up to 4-0 now, coach, uh, to start the season, and we're almost halfway through the regular season, believe it or not. It's just been flying by. The Threshers fresh off a 50-21 home victory over Ottawa University. Uh, Bethel had a very strong first half with 36 points in the first half, and then 14 in the fourth quarter to win 50 to 21. Coach, uh, after a game like that, um, you know, there's a lot of things that happened that were good, and there were some huge things that were happening that somebody could consider bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but w w walking away from that one, what were your feelings? Um, it's funny. I, I told the guys the same thing uh, that I, I'll share with you guys. Um, I knew that that week that this game was going to be, you know, um, uh, tough mentally because, you know, we, we did. We played that past Sunday. It kind of threw us out of rhythm. Uh, we had a, a, a big, big time, emotional, historic win. Um, and then to come and play a team that on paper was scary. They were scary. I mean, they're, they're holding people to – uh, low amount of points, you know what I mean? And they're uh, trying to find their offensive groove. Uh, so it, it was scary. And, and I knew that, you know, if we gave them some momentum, it could potentially be a dog fight. And I just, you know, I told our guys to expect a dog fight. I tell them that every week. But uh, walking away, uh, seeing how our guys respond to two huge fumble returns for touchdowns that uh, really kept them in the game early and gave them all the momentum they needed. Uh, to really be in the game, if not win the game, mm -hmm. and to see our guys uh, respond on both sides of the ball. Every time something you know bad happened with that with the fumble, our offense would drive back down the field mm -hmm. to to regain the lead instead of a tie, and uh, to see how both uh, you know sides of the football responded, um, I was just I was very pleased, and I you know, and I'm just like okay. They're starting to, to believe in themselves a little bit. They're starting to have some confidence um, and not let, you know, w w we know like, okay, we should score some points here or we should move the ball here or, you know, we've got to make up for this mistake. And, and these guys are starting to believe that they can do those things. And, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you, man, that's a, that's a, it's a really, really positive thing. So I left – I left from the game just feeling like, okay, these guys are uh, – they're, they're ready to continue to play. And I was pleased with that. And that's what I told them. I didn't harp on the mistakes too much. Obviously, you don't want them to happen. Uh, but I didn't harp on the, the mistakes too much at all. I was just like – I more so uh, praised the, the, the positive things that they did because that game could have been completely different um, – for the negative for, for us, you know, it could have been completely different. And the fact that, you know, they still come away with a 30 point uh, win, it's, it, it was, I literally was, was grateful. I was grateful that I'm a, part of, I'm a part of this football program with these group of young men. The Threshers went at 50 to 21. Um, I think you hit it right on, Coach. Uh, as far as that goes, yes, you know, you scored, they score off the fumble recovery, you score, they score off fumble recovery. But you didn't need a game-winning touchdown this time. Yeah. Um, you guys set the tone of offensively very early, which is something that you could argue you hadn't done in a game until this one, um, 
respectfully. Yeah, but. yeah, that's. I mean that that's true, but it's 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 part of it. I was listening to, uh, I can't remember who it was, but they were saying that a lot of people try to measure like greatness prematurely. Like, mm -hmm. in order to be great, you can't be afraid to grow. Meaning that mm -hmm. you may you're not you're going to be a beginner to start. And yeah. that's kind of where we were as an offense. Uh, defense is a little bit different, but as an offense, we were just at the beginning. That's it. You know, we were at the beginning, and now we're we're kind of, you know, we're a little bit past the beginning. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, we're not quite in the middle, but we're past the beginning. We're not at the beginning anymore, and it's only going to get better. I mean, uh, you, we, we just witnessed it in the previous era with an offense that I guarantee you people would have bet money did not work. You understand before, what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They would have bet money before yeah. uh, it became popular here. They would have bet money that, that you can't win with that. It doesn't work. But that's not what sure. matters. It's, right. it's, you know, the guys and, and uh, how you rep it and how you practice it. And mm -hmm. that's what these guys are just getting. They're getting better about it. As a matter of fact, I was talking to Chan Scurry today, and he was just saying, yeah, today in practice, it felt like it was about mid-October. Uh, not weather-wise, but rhythm-wise. We were just sure. in the groove, uh, the music's going, and guys are out there just flying around, and it's natural. It feels natural now. Offense had one of the best practices that we had all year, and I was talking with Chance Curry, and I'm just like, man, did you ever feel like it would get to this point during this season? He was like, no, but now it's just normal. It's just mm -hmm. normal, you know what I mean? Yes. And that's, that's all it has to do, and that's why, you know, I, I never uh, – I never was panicked about it because it's a this is an it's a it's an art. It takes mm -hmm. it takes time to perfect the craft. And I know mm -hmm. in the microwave era, we want things instantly, especially when you, we've been successful. But the truth of the matter is, you know, good things take time. Yes. And and that's what that's what I'm about. You know, I'm about just slow and steady wins the race. We're gonna keep doing the little things trying to do them right. We've been blessed and fortunate enough to, to win games, but we're not going to sell our soul for instant wins. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it. We're going to do it right, and we're going to build something, continue to build something here at Bethel College that can sustain the test of time, hopefully. There you go. The Threshers score first with a 68-yard rushing touchdown for DJ Sears. It was just as exciting to watch as it was to call and broadcast on the KCAC network. Uh, DJ set the tone, uh, and then he also got the second touchdown for you guys out of five yards out. Um, a 12-yard rushing touchdown in the game and another five-yard rushing touchdown for four touchdowns in the game. Yeah. He's got to be up there in the nation in NAI football as far as rushing touchdowns. Uh, we'll have to pull it up at some point. But a, a remarkable game from DJ. He goes over 100 yards rushing. Cash McRae also goes over 100 yards rushing. There's so many positives there. Can't Caden Christensen gets a touchdown. Scott Greider is your leading receiver off that screen play that you guys had, like 50 yards. Yep. Tyler Dobbs had a catch for 17 yards. Yep. They weren't expecting you to throw to the H back there, were they? No, but, no. <laughs> but I mean, it's something they practice. They've been practicing that for like three weeks. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, we need it. We never throw to the H. Let's do it. Yeah. Coach, Coach Langford again. Doing an excellent job. Uh, all the guy, all the coaches are, uh, but I, I'm very, very proud of what he's doing, especially with the way it started and how it could look from the outside. And again, like I said, we're we're not quite in the middle yet, and, and you know he he understands that we're going to continue to grow and get better. But he's doing a, a phenomenal job, and the future is, is very bright. Indeed, yet yeah, I, I thought I saw something that I was hoping to see at some point in the season. I had no doubt that Coach Langford went and looked back at some previous seasons, utilizing guys like Mario Quintero and Tucker Smith in the run game. Is you know Those guys, they're so fluid with it, having run the flex bone and been an A back there, to get the ball back in their hands and run it without having to worry about you know catching in the backfield and getting hit, things like that. It just gives them a lot of confidence. Oh, absolutely. And it was more so... Uh, we just had to shore up some things on the perimeter and just 
w within the whole scheme of things to to make it work because if you look at early games we try to do some of those things but mm -hmm. when you do it and it's not a positive play it, it kind of you know it diverts you from trying to continue it so uh, it's always been there mm -hmm. we're just getting better about it so you can see mm -hmm. that's why it's like oh it's constantly happening happening because we're getting better about it guys are understanding yeah. how to uh, you know, how to fit the perimeter, how to block it up, you know, the angles that they need to take. So, uh, but yeah, getting those guys the football, it, it just makes it hard on the defense. Speaking of defense, uh, switch, switching over to the Thresher defense, Josh Siebel only has seven tackles in this, but there was so many, it was a group effort really. Everybody playing extremely well um, as far as defensively. You've had it, your defense has intercepted their opponent every game this year. Uh, which is remarkable. Uh, you guys ended up with three interceptions in the game. Uh, Brennan Sanders again. I don't know why they throw at him or Trey Palmer. At yeah, this rate because Brennan returned the interception for a touchdown, um, and you know Trey gets one in the end zone, and then Robin Neely, I believe, was the other. Yes, one, he was. The Robin. third interception. Mm -hmm. So uh, really, you know, your coverage game was definitely there uh, against Ottawa. They threw a lot of different things at you guys just to see you know, what would work yeah. in the first place. Um, but I feel like it was a good test for them and they responded well. Absolutely, and that, that's what they've done all year. It's a veteran group of guys. And to talk about, you know, see both seven tackles, you got to understand in the, first, in the first half, it was about the end of the second quarter and they had only, all, Ottawa had only ran like 14 plays. Mm -hmm. or something like that because right. of think of how long the offense was on the field because we have a long drive about to take it in from the five f fumble and they take it 95 yards for a touchdown mm -hmm. having we take it on a scoring drive and then we three in out them right and then we have another long drive about to go in around the 20 somewhere around there get fumbled picked up taking back 70 plus yards yeah. and then the offense is back on the field and it's mm -hmm. driving down have another long scoring drive and then you know we three and out block punt touchdown take a interception touchdown so Ottawa didn't have the the football that much in the first half which is you know 15 plays Seaboat probably if the ball's in, in the air, he's not getting the tackle if it's an incomplete pass. Right. So, you know, just not a lot of opportunities. But uh, again, like you say, those guys are selfless, man, and they they want to win and just play for each other. And um, it's it's a great it's a great group. Yes, it is. Uh, the Threshers get the victory four and zero now to fifty to twenty one over Ottawa. Uh, Ottawa scores in the fourth quarter. That was their only their third offensive touchdown all season long. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're continuing to figure some stuff up there um, in Ottawa, uh, dealing with losing some personnel as well. I, I was talking to some other people uh, before the season, so they're they're dealing with change just like you guys have somewhat dealt with change mm -hmm. um, within this program, but. Before I, I move on from anything else, I want to talk about special teams. Um, you know, some different personnel in special teams positions. Um, Logan DeMond was out this game. Mm -hmm. um, and so you move Braden to kick off. He's used to kicking off. He's done that a lot of times mm -hmm. over the last four or five years. And uh, Carson Sauceda gets a chance to uh, kick extra points. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was perfect. Yes, he was. He did a great job, you know. And it was one of those things where – uh, during the week, um, Carson, good enough to kick off as well. Um, it was one more, uh, it was one of those re things of like, well, Braden has done it. And, you know, we, if, if something was to break loose, because we knew going into the game, um, we had to be on point in every phase of the game. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. if we, if the only way that we felt we could, uh, you know, really, uh, be be down in that game and lose that game as if we were giving up turnovers for scores and uh, special teams if we weren't playing well on special teams. So it was more about putting the veteran group out on kickoff just in case they broke one that we, we felt comfortable with uh, Braden being back there to, to secure the tackle 
But mm-hmm. Carson has a good enough leg to kick off if, uh, you know, if we wanted to do that as well. But we did, you know, we, we wanted to give him his opportunity to kick field goals because, you know, Braden can kick field goals as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we wanted to keep things as similar as possible. So keeping Braden holding and just putting a, a new kicker out there. And uh, he did. He, he answered the bell, man, and we were proud of him. And um, what, I'm, what I'm most proud of, too, is Logan DeMond, um, it's it's hard when you when you 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 know he's out with with an injury. Um, uh, you know it's easy to feel like replaced or things like that. But uh, he did a great job of encouraging uh, Carson and texting them before the game, texting them after the game, saying great job. And uh, that's really what I want to highlight as well. So mm-hmm. uh, I do want to highlight Carson did a, a phenomenal job. I told him great job, man, after the game that he did exactly what we needed him to do. Uh, but I also want to uh, give a shout out to Logan DeMond as well for uh, being, a, being a really, really good team, team player in a, in a tough time. Yeah, I was actually talking to Logan, uh, text message before the game, and I said, you know, if you're any kind of discouraged right now, you shouldn't be because you bring so much more to this place than football. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that speaks. He's going to graduate with two bachelor degrees, and that's impressive as well. So, But, yes, um, you know, everybody in special teams. And then your punt return group, what was it, Joey Blakesley uh, gets the block because he blocks his guy. Uh, they did try to rugby style punt. Yep. They've been doing it, and then he gets on, and then Conlon Brugman gets on the football in yes. the end zone, yes. touchdown pressures. It was such an unbelievable moment. I was just trying to figure out like who was who because yeah. I tell you what, those gray uniforms from up high. It's oh like, yeah. yeah, really hard to tell who's who. Yeah, but even with binoculars or anything like that. So, but yeah, it was just really exciting because. Some of those guys have been in this program for a long time, and yes. they needed that kind of moment because they had earned it. Yes, that, and that was Colin Bergman's first co- collegiate touchdown. Yep. So uh, we were we were super excited for him, and anybody knows him and things that he's he's kind of been through. Man, I'm so happy for that young man, and uh, man, he's he's a warrior, man. He's a fighter, uh, a thresher through and through. So, same with Joey, and uh, man, just happy to see those guys you know, uh, having success and, and being able to celebrate things mm-hmm. out on the football field. That's that's what it's all about. You know, you, you build the emotion in the game uh, to celebrate the positives. Yes, you know that the game's not over yet and you got to go out and fight again. But you have to be excited about playing football, and yes. you, want, you always want to play more, like, like we've talked about. But mm-hmm. the Threshers, uh, three turnovers, but despite that, a 50-21 to 21 victory over Ottawa on Saturday and uh, it was uh, quite the, the game uh, for you guys. And then looked at some other games around the conference. Avila and Southwestern went down to the wire. Avila yeah. had it inside the five. Mm-hmm. The last play of the game, they couldn't get a, a playoff uh, and they ended up falling 24 to 21. I'll tell you what, Avila probably should be ranked. They're, they're a good yeah, team. They are, they're a good team. They are. And uh, it's, un- it's, it's unfortunate, man. Uh, I feel like the the KCAC isn't getting too much love this year, but it's all right, man. I say that, but we've got three ranked teams, so I guess you can't be greedy and, and ask for the fourth. But sure. I do I do think uh, that Avila is a, is a really, really good football team um, and, and it should be considered, you know what I mean, for sure. No doubt. Yeah, I was surprised not to, that, to see they didn't receive any votes in this week's Coaches pull. Uh, Kansas Wesleyan in at 16. They get a victory, really 49-6 to six against Bethany. We'll get to Bethany in a little bit. Uh, friends with the victory at home against St. Mary. And then a pretty good game between Sterling and Tabor, and Tabor pulls it out. Yeah, that Tabor, was a good game. Yeah, uh, Tabor's now won four straight after dropping their uh, season opener on the road. Um, in non-conference action, so you know, it's getting pretty tough. No, no, they won. They beat Iowa Wesleyan. They lost to Avila. Oh, that's right. They I was to trying Avila. to remember exactly yeah. how that worked because yeah. it's been so long. <laughs> yeah, so they won, lost to Avila, and then now they've won three straight. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So, yeah, and so they're making some noise. They're a little quiet right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Coach Gardner's got them going well. Uh, we'll see them in a few weeks, I'm sure. But uh, if, uh, in Hillsboro, but just being mindful of all that action, uh, there's some definitely some great games. Um, but yeah, <laughs> KCAC is making a strong point for itself right now with three teams in the top 16 
in the country at Southwestern at number six, Bethel at 14, and Kadub at 16. So, again, the Threshers go to 4 0 on the season, and they get sent to take on the Bethany Swedes. It'll be an afternoon kick, we believe, 1 o'clock from Lindsborg. Uh, you can watch it on the KCAC network with the Bethany College announcers. Uh, I'll be there shooting video from the sideline. Um, it's always uh, it's been a couple years since Bethel went to Bethany, and uh, it was quite the game. We'll, we'll, we, we'll, we, we will touch on it in a little bit here, but uh, again, we're just wrapping up the Ottawa game, um, moving forward, and so the Threshers go to 4-0, and and the Threshers and Southwestern, the lone undefeated teams left in the KCAC through uh, officially four weeks of the NAIA football season. So when we come back, we'll talk about the Threshers and Bethany College coming up here on the Thresher Football Show. Thresher fans, get ready for the upcoming school year by becoming a member of the Bethel Booster Club. Your membership impacts all athletic programs by paying for experiences last year, such as the Threshbees Award Show, postseason experiences and postseason tickets, the Hall of Fame Banquet, enhanced live streaming equipment, new banners in Thresher Gym, equipment for the Gearing Hall Weight Room, windscreens at Ward Tennis Center, and Thresher Stadium. Be a part of Thresher Athletics history in a booster club that is living out the Bethel College Athletics mission by creating life-changing experiences for our student-athletes through four levels of membership membership plus parent and young alumni specials. Athletics is an integral part of the Bethel College experience and thanks to your support, we look forward to growing our success for the future. Visit BethelThreshers.com slash Booster Club to become a member today. We're kicking off another year here at Bethel College and we need your help in making this another successful season. Thanks to your generosity in the spring, we were able to purchase championship rings and practice jerseys for our players, giving them a big time experience. Since then, we've added several new faces to the program and we couldn't be more excited to get to work molding a group of upstanding young men. All summer long, our guys have been getting after it in the weight room, and since August 5th, we've been hard at work preparing to put a product on the field that honors the tradition of Bethel College football. With your help, we're ready to make this another great year. Thanks for your generosity, and roll on. Thank you. 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 Welcome back to the Thresher Football Show. Dan Page alongside A.B. Stokes, head football coach at Bethel College. The Threshers 4-0, also 4-0 Southwestern College in the conference. Those two at the top right now, but a lot of good football being played with the likes of Kansas Wesleyan and Avalo University. Uh, I said it in the first part of the show, DJ Sears has to be up there among the nation's leaders in rushing touchdowns. He is the nation's leader in NAIA <laughs> level of rushing touchdowns. He has nine, seven in the last two weeks. Wow. Um, is impressive for DJ Sears. Um, he continues to have a stellar college career, not just a sophomore. Um, I had some friends uh, that are Division I media members that reached out to me and went, were asking questions about him, things like that, because they think, you know, they're impressed. Oh, yeah. So it's definitely been a really cool thing to see. But, uh, yeah, nine rushing touchdowns on the season. DJ Sears leading NAIA in rushing touchdowns. It's pretty impressive. So the Threshers 4-0 getting set to take on the Bethany College Swedes. One o'clock. Um, on Saturday, first day of October, uh, an afternoon football game, um, you know, uh, against the Swedes, who are 0 and 3 to start the year. Uh, they had a bye week in week one officially, so they've only played three games. And uh, you know, the, the first four teams they play on their schedule just happen to be the top four teams in the conference right now, which is pretty impressive. Uh, they lost to Southwestern on September 10th, 65 to nothing at Southwestern. The one home game that they've had a chance to play was abbreviated because of weather, um, but Avila was up 21 to nothing. They ended up calling that game, uh, that same storm that we saw the week of this, the Kate up game. Mm -hmm. And then speaking of Kansas Wesleyan, they go to Kansas Wesleyan, score first mm -hmm. against the Coyotes, go down the field, score first, rushing touchdown, um, their only touchdown of the season. 
and then give up 49 uh, to the Coyotes. And so they have an 0-3 start. They've had so many challenges to start this season, even before the season even started, um, with the coaching um, change. And uh, it, it's definitely a difficult spot for the program that has – historically been successful in the past mm -hmm. and um, there's a lot of people around Kansas that are linked to Bethany College that would like to see it get back to that level someday at some point but mm -hmm. um, when you look at Bethany just kind of going into this game considering all those facts uh, what are your thoughts on the Swedes? Well you know again like you said they've had so many challenges to overcome and uh, you know being it, it, at any level of football is hard to overcome uh, a coaching change Check really, really close to uh, the beginning of the season. Um, I know they have uh, – that, that hurts retention. Uh, that hurts recruitment. Um, so it's it's just uh, – it, it's they're, they're in, a, in a tough spot. But, uh, you know, I think that they're, they're doing the best that they can with, with what they have. And uh, Coach, Coach Grigsby is uh, – he, he's definitely – Goal trying to do the right things and trying center. to do right by them yeah, right now. I, I've uh, I've talked with him just a, just a little bit. Uh, seems like a, a, a great guy, down. and uh, they they do they really need uh, to a little a little stability uh, right now. That that's that's probably one of the, the biggest things that can hinder uh, you because right now I mean if you think about it we think of the some of the struggles that we faced and we had an off season together. You know what I mean and. and uh, Bethany hasn't had an opportunity to have an offseason. So um, that, 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 I think that's, you know, that's part of it. But uh, it is college football, man, and you, you got you to gotta roll, roll with the storm sometimes. Yeah, you definitely do. Um, Bethany, a couple years ago, Threshers went on the road to Bethany, and I think they were held to negative yardage in the first half. Uh, it was just a – very defensive game. I had more defensive video highlights that game for Bethel mm. than offensive. So that was an impressive outing at the same time. Some hard hitting, uh, no doubt. Um, but, yeah, they're definitely in a position to where, well, honestly, there's nowhere to go but up yeah. uh, for them. And they have, you know, don't really have anything to lose going forward because they have everything to prove and they they can turn things around. It's just, you know, a lot of things that need to go their way in just buying into um, each other more than importantly. I mean, regardless of, you know, the, the way things are, you, you still got to play a football game together each and every week. Yeah, I'll let Coach Grigsby worry about that. Okay. <laughs> sure, yeah, I mean – no question. I let, yeah, I mean, we can talk about that for for hours. That's a it's a lot, but you know, I'll let their I'll let their coach kind of kind of worry about that, and, sure. and I'll just you know hopefully get our guys ready to go. Well, and just kind of looking at it uh, from the outside, looking in on this matchup, uh, Threshers of course went sixty nine to six against Bethany last year. Had a lot of. Uh, records. Tucker Smith just absolutely went off, almost rushed for 300 yards in on just a few carries um, and at least three touchdowns. He had a big game a year ago uh, at home. Uh, the Threshers have won three straight now against Bethany, going back to the 2019 season, season opener, um, where the Threshers were able to get the victory. It was 7-7 seven to seven at halftime way back then, and Rudy Juarez had the first touchdown of the season yeah. um, that year. But uh, the Threshers uh, since that point, again, they got the 34 to 14 victory, 38 to nothing. The next year, 69 to six. Um, last year, so a little bit of a swing going your guys' way um, against Bethany. Um, what? Do, how? I mean, you guys seem focused, no doubt. Um, you guys know what you need to do in accomplishing this game. Uh, what are some things that? you feel like it's important not to do going in to this kind of a matchup? Well, I mean, we, we, we talk about it all the time. Don't underestimate anyone. We play faceless opponents uh, every week. We play faceless opponents. It doesn't matter. And, and that's, you know, what we talk to the guys about. The way you prepare should not depend on who you're playing. It, it shouldn't. You should prepare a certain way because – this is what you do. This is what I'm disciplined to do. And, you know, this, and, and this is my best effort. So 
we, you know, you, you can't uh, look at record. You can't, you know, look at hit past history, uh, any of that circumstance. It's just a faceless opponent. It's just we're getting ready to play a football game. We, we, you prepared to play a football game last week. You have to do the same this week, and you'll do the same next, the week after. It's mm -hmm. just you prepare to play a football game. I don't believe in, uh, I don't believe in like uh, extra hype, like hyping things up, only for the sake of a football game is roughly two and a half, three hours long. I mean, you and I both know. You're not as hyped as you can be going into a game. It's gonna fade mm -hmm. rather quickly. So the best thing you can do is be prepared, mm -hmm. right? How about be prepared and then do the things that you've prepared to do, and that that's how we we take it. I don't think you can don't put anything extra on it. You know, don't underestimate anybody. Uh, you go into the game to play the game to the best of your ability, because. Why? Because that's what you do. That's it. It's definitely a focused approach. You see it a lot of times. Uh, for me, just my observations uh, in pregame. You know, the, mm -hmm. the other your opponent can be hooping and hollering all they want, and mm -hmm. you know, spending all this energy. But Bethel, the last even this year and the last three four years, it's just all focus. Oh yeah. In pregame, don't you know? You don't need to be excited. You you get to play football. That's it. Yeah, that's the excitement enough. Yeah. You know. You know. Your performance in the game that should be where the excitement is. And no question. Um. You know. <laughs> I remember some teams. You know, I think we we're at Avila back in 2019. And said they were saying in pregame, "You guys don't want it," <laughs> and stuff like that. And, yeah. You know. You know. Yeah. You, you can let them think about stuff like that, but you guys take care of yourselves, and that's certainly the, still the approach mm -hmm. in the Bethel program oh, yeah. uh, today. But uh, looking at some stats for the Swedes, uh, the, their leading passer is a freshman quarterback, number 19. He uh, has thrown for 175 yards, uh, 17 to 34 passing. That uh, does have three picks on there as well. Their team has thrown – Six picks on this season and thrown for 325 yards in the past game. Their lone touchdown has come back from their sophomore running back, J.J. Allen. He has 124 yards rushing. Uh, he got that touchdown, uh, I believe it was a two-yard touchdown, against Kansas Wesleyan on the opening drive last week. Um, a few guys that have got the chance to run the ball as well in the receiving game. Um, you know, not a lot of yardage there except for – a couple of players, that, uh, if you look at it, J.J. Allen, again, he can catch out of the backfield. Mm -hmm. He's their leading receiver as well, 132 yards mm -hmm. on seven receptions. Um, Brock Burnett and Aaron Tillich are their two other receivers that have at least 40 yards receiving um, for the Swedes. And then looking at things defensively for Bethany um, and tackles and things like that, uh, some of their lead tacklers – with 20 tackles is Julian Carpenter, a sophomore linebacker. Um, Samuel Sinodi uh, another linebacker with 17 tackles on the season and with 15 tackles, Shane Harris. Um, just overall personnel-wise, um, you know, people can – other people can look at this team Bethany has and dismiss them as maybe not having weapons, but uh, everybody in this conference has weapons. So yeah. when you see Bethany – what what are some players that you definitely see can do damage against you guys? Uh, definitely that running back. I believe he's number twenty one, mm -hmm. um, and then it, it's it may be that top linebacker that you're talk, talking about. Those are two. Um, they're really really good football players. Uh, both of those guys. And and one thing too though, Bethany they play a lot of people. They play a lot of people. We noticed that uh, pretty early on film that you know they'll play. And, and we say that we, we play a lot of people at times, especially in the backfield, but they'll play three, four running backs, and uh, I think, man, 10-plus 10, 10 receivers. Like, so they'll, they'll play a lot of people, which, um, you know, that could be good or bad depending on, you know, uh, the conditioning of, of a defense or an offense, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. they do play a lot of people, and, you know, I'm looking at it like all these guys are getting experience. So the death, you know, the death is going to be – be there, you're going to, you know, if they play that many people, that means they got to be confident in, uh, you know, the abilities of, of one through through ten, you know. 
Certainly, yeah. I mean, especially when you give your younger guys opportunities. We've seen it here. Um, you know, every, the last four years, you know, you get when you have freshmen that can make, come in and make an impact, or even sophomores that can step in and hold their own at this level so quickly. It's certainly impressive. And everybody in this conference has weapons, and uh, as far as <laughs> players go, and so it's something that you absolutely have to respect. Um, treat nobody differently. You know, you, you, it's you're, like you said, you're focused on the job that needs to be done. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Against the Threshers and the Bethany College Swedes, one o'clock kick on Saturday at the afternoon kick, uh, first road afternoon kick. Hopefully, you guys don't bring the rain on the road with you this oh, time. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I, I've been, you know, I've been looking. And in the past, that meant absolutely nothing because I looked right. at a couple of weeks ago and there was no rain whatsoever. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, we were in a hurricane. Uh, but I've been looking, and it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't look likely as, <laughs> as if there would be rain. So I'm hoping we, we don't bring it. If, if we do, Dan, we got to move this show to a different day. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, I just remember at Kansas Wesleyan, it was like less than an hour before kickoff. It was like, oh, there's only a 30% chance of storms. We'll be all right. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 But, yeah, I mean, playing in the rain the last couple home games um, and then coming back home and, and playing against Ottawa, uh, it was definitely a good win for you guys, 50-21 to 21 there. Yeah, I'm looking at the roster for Bethany and seeing so many young guys, freshmen, Sophomore, senior, senior, sophomore, sophomore, sophomore. Huge sophomore class, huge mm -hmm. freshman class as well. Um, they, no doubt, they're looking at this game or just this season as opportunities to you know play at the college level. Um, you know, and with this with type of things that are going on for Bethany at 0 and 3 to start, um, everybody's looking for their opportunity to break out, and so that's you know you got to respect everybody. Absolutely, absolutely, and if you don't, you know. Um, you, you you would be uh, disappointed, you know. <laughs> it would be a, a bad surprise because, mm -hmm. like you said, this is college football, and you see it at every level of college football teams that you like don't think should compete. Definitely like not win against another team. And I'm not by any means saying that that's Bethany Bethel, uh, but you see it, and then and then the team gets quote unquote upset. Well. You know, there are a couple things that, that go into it. Number one, uh, maybe the team wasn't as bad as everybody thought, thought they were. Sure. You know, and, and then the other, other side is maybe the team uh, that was supposed to be better underestimated them, didn't take them seriously. Uh, so we're always prepared. I mean, I, I think every week's a, a new team. Um, I feel like that for us, no matter uh, how we play against an opponent, the next, you know, the next week, it's a new week, you know. So yeah, we had some things that didn't ha that didn't go our way this past week, but this upcoming week, it it's a new week. And if you think like, oh, we're gonna come and get two defensive touchdowns off of Bethel College, you're gonna be sadly surprised. I mean, you're unpleasantly surprised because. We're not going to just come in and continue to make those mistakes or continue to play. We're going to get better every week. I don't care who we're playing. Mm -hmm. We're going to get better every week. Like that, that is the bare minimum of, of my expectations and all these coaches' expectations for this program is that we want to consistently get better and play our best football toward the end of the season. I said it. I said it earlier right. in the show, and yeah. I mean, it's you see the trend going in that direction. Uh, but we we are going to get better every week because if you start stop and think like, oh, we can take this week off or we can do this, then mm -hmm. you just wasted a week, man. Right. You know what I mean? You just wasted a week. Right. If you get, you know, you know if you go undefeated until that last regular season game and you lose it, I yeah. mean, that's that's something that's got to be. You know, stick to your stomach about. It. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, just want to get better every week and and play our best football um, at the end. That's what we want. We want to play our best football at the end. Well, what's the end? Well, the end of this week, the end of next week. You yeah. know what I mean? At the end of the, we want to play our best football at the end. 
for the foreseeable season. November 5th is the last game for the regular season for the Threshers. Uh, it'll be home against St. Mary at that time. But we're going to switch gears here to um, going through some statistics, just some facts and information on the Threshers. Mentioned DJ Sears, nine rushing touchdowns on the year. He's rushed for 344 years, or yards, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, 224 yards rushing for Cash McRae, 181 for Chance Scurry. Uh, Scurry with one touchdown on the season. Caden Christensen with one touchdown on the season. Um, I think they, they kind of split some of his stats up here on what I'm looking at uh, at the same time. In the passing game, uh, DJ 32 of 49 uh, for 275, two touchdowns and four interceptions. Uh, and then in the receiving game for you guys, Braden Francis continues to lead the program in receiving nine receptions for 71 yards and a touchdown that he had against Kansas Wesleyan. And then flipping over to the defensive side of the ball for the Threshers, uh, no doubt Josh Shebolt with 35 tackles. Your linebackers leading the way with Cade Miller at number two with 30 tackles on the season. Grant Godsey at 25, Doug Greider at 22. Uh, Grant's having a great season yes, in the is. secondary. Um, you, you just had that veteran group that is ex playing extraordinarily well. Yeah. And then some guys like, you know, Devontae Pickard that just just this year joined that group yep. and already making an impact. And he can put some uh, hit into those oh, tackles yeah. as well. So um, just so, a lot of depth for this team, a lot of guys that have been here a while for the Threshers. As far as sacks go, Jairo Castillo um, – I believe he has six, seven sacks, no, six sacks on the season, mm. if I'm not mistaken, unless that they duplicated his stats here. Uh, that could have been the case. Otherwise, he would have three. John Henson with two and a half, Doug Gratter with one and a half, and Cade Miller with one, Tate Siebel, Jesse Garcia also with one, and Devontae Pickard with one for the Threshers. Uh, Braden Sanders, or Brendan Sanders, rather, three interceptions on the season to mm. lead the team. Mm. Uh, Trey Palmer with two. And Josh Siebold with one, and Robin Neely with one okay. for the season so far. So, what, seven interceptions there. And back-to-back uh, -back weeks, Brennan Sanders with uh, interception return for touchdown. Three games in a row where you've had an interception return yeah. for touchdown yeah. for the Threshers. That's That's got to say a lot about um, your past defense at the same time. So, yeah, you know, just looking at things thoroughly um, – I, and I know we don't want to count chickens or anything like that, but it's but definitely been an impressive start to the season. I think we can all acknowledge that. Yeah, you know, I was talking to, um, with someone at practice. It might have been Chan Scurry again. Uh, we talk a lot at practice. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Chance, that's my talking buddy. You know? There you go. Um, yeah. Because we, we try to, you know, make sure he's healthy and take care of him. Uh, but we we're, were talking at practice and uh, – it was just one of those things where going into the season, we, we didn't we didn't know exactly what it was going to be. We knew what it could be, uh, but we look back at it and, and he and I were both saying like just how 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 favored we are, how blessed we are, because we in three games we were down in the fourth quarter. I mean, in the in the second half, excuse mm -hmm. me, three games uh, out of the four we were down mm -hmm. in the second half and, you know, Two of those um, could have easily been lost. I mean, 13 to zero to a good, really, really good McPherson team. Uh, just 10 seven to, to friends. That that one wasn't as threatening. Um, but then 24 to 16 to the number nine team in the country in Kansas Wesleyan. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, man, that the fact that we got out of that uh, with 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 wins is nothing but supernatural effort and uh the grace of god that's how we feel about it Absolutely. you know what i mean and yeah. so it's one of those things where it's like okay we've done that why wouldn't we give our best you know what i mean like like why would it's, it's almost like um when you're when you're in a, in a near-death experience sure. you know i hate to relate you know football just something like that but right. when you and you make it through and now you're like living life with no fear you know that's kind of how this season is going it's just like hey we we're going to just give our all why wouldn't we not 
Why would right. we not? You know what I mean? And that's that's uh, that's the attitude of, of, of these coaches and the, these players and trainers. And we're we're just excited to to play football on Saturdays. Like, hey, we 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 want to play. Anybody else want to play? You know what I mean? Right. So we we just they're, they're just excited, man, and and uh, just understand because it it you know we made it through a crazy September. And now we're now we're on the on the hunt in October. So, yeah, no question. It's so good to look around and see some of the guys that have been here a while. And just one last ride for some of them all together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's definitely a special season. Uh, several players that have made a name for themselves and just given their heart and soul to the program at the same time. So, uh, no question. It's it's so easy to. Um, want those guys to succeed mm -hmm. because of the t not just because of football, but the type of people they are, and it's been very impressive, uh, f you know, to watch these first four games. And hopefully, we get to play a lot more the rest of the way. I'm excited for it. But the Threshers take on Bethany College for a one o'clock kick on Saturday, October first, uh, from Lindsborg. If you can't be there, you can watch on the KCAC Network, KCACNetwork.com the KCAC Network app, or if you have a smart TV, you can get the KCAC Network app on there as well, like uh, Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick, Roku, all those good things that you can do nowadays. So, Well, that's going to do it for our show this week. Um, Coach A.B. Stokes, I'm Dan Page. Um, you know, we Threshers are 4-0, and uh, as I've been saying a lot, Coach, just praise God for those moments that, <laughs> you know, so far this year and hopefully many more like it. So for Coach Stokes, I'm Dan Page. Roll on.